Hey guys, it's Alana. Welcome to another COVID conversation with me and Jamie Hampton from the Praying Christian Women podcast. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. How about you? It's actually good. Like I'm feeling good today. Our son has made an absolute corner turn with his recovery from his tonsillectomy. Poor guy. So he wakes up in a lot of pain in the mornings and it's gotten to where like he's, he's a little bit afraid to fall asleep at night. Um, but he did really good. He fell, he fell asleep maybe around like 12 or 1230, which is late, but then he, um, slept until about 10 and poor guy, like his, he's, he's eight days post-op. I, I really wasn't expecting it to take this long. <laughs> he woke up and he couldn't really open his mouth for the first like 10 minutes. It, like everything was just kind of shut, but now he's feeling so much better. And he ate, um, the closest thing he's had to a meal, like this whole week has been a big bowl of cereal which he had um, after he woke up. So I, yeah, I'm feeling good about that for sure. Very thankful. Oh, I'm so glad that's, oh, there's nothing worse, even in normal circumstances than having your kids sick or in pain that you can't just make go away. (laughs) I know, I know. And I'm still sleeping downstairs with him. So he was told it's more comfortable to sleep propped up. So he's on the couch and, or he's in the reclining chair. I'm on the couch. And um, thankfully though, I mean, it's, it's going okay. And um, again, I'm just so thankful to be on this side of the recovery. Oh yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah. Oh, which absolutely reminds me, he wants to connect with your kids on Messenger still, so that they I can know. Like, chat. I was just thinking so about that. that. <laughs> yes, we have to remember that because yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. we definitely need to do that. I was thinking about that the other day, like it, during his recovery time. I'm sure, especially, mm-hmm. he'd like to have that kind of connection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, with the kids being basically sequestered, you know, um, my oldest son has been taking this homeschool literature class all semester where they meet once a month. It's basically like, it's kind of like an online book club, but a little bit more scholastic. Um, there's like writing assignments and things, but it was just nice. It, I don't know if he agreed. He's kind of totally fine with this because he's very, very introverted. Yeah. But I just, I feel good knowing that, um, you know, he was getting a little interaction. They usually, they have a standing board game date with our neighbor's kids on Fridays, and they're going to try it on Google Hangouts tomorrow, so. Oh, that's a we'll good see idea. how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't imagine navigating this kind of isolation without the internet. I know. I mean, I feel like this has been... I, you know, I'm sure well, we've talked about this. I'm sure other pandemics or epidemics have caused isolation for mm-hmm. whatever reason in other times. But I feel really blessed that my kids are doing online music lessons. Your kids mm-hmm. are doing online game meetings, you know, and yeah. we can connect. We can watch our church services online mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. connect like this and have conversations. I've seen lots of podcasts and different people doing this kind of thing where they're yeah. just checking in and I, just I know love it. it's really it's so helpful I did a call this morning I'm part of um, I'm an, a coach in an author group and we had a call this morning and it was really nice just I mean the first 20 minutes had nothing to do with book writing or marketing and it was just how are you guys doing is everybody okay and it's really important yeah I think so Cool. Well, what's your uh, kind of weekend looking like? Uh, we are, I mean, it's it's pretty much looking the same as our week, other than yep. um, our church is doing, they're not having services, but they are recording worship and the pastor speaking. Mm-hmm. So they're doing that on Saturday. So my husband oh, okay. does sound. So oh. the few of them are going to go and like, do the recording of the service. Is it going to be more like a live stream or more just like a, here's a recording? It's not a live stream. Uh It's a recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it on Mm -hmm. Sunday. So I guess their hope was that the people doing the music would be able to sit in and Mm -hmm. be with their families on Sunday. That makes sense. Worship that way. So they're going to record it. I don't know if they're just recording the worship or if there's going to be a live stream pastor. I don't know a lot. I just know my husband is doing the sound. We'll so he is going to, he's mm-hmm. going to go on site. So, and you yeah. know, yeah. And you know, that brings up the question to me. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because my, how do I put this? I know that there are a lot of different views on how this whole thing should be handled. 
I know there is on one end, you've got people that are just like totally, you know, isolation is best. And if you're not adhering to that, then there's something wrong. In fact, I think a new term has emerged, quarantine shaming. Have you heard this? <laughs> no, but I can absolutely get that. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the other end, you've got like the pictures of Florida where kids are out there like enjoying spring break, like the world is just the same. And, and I've noticed, you know, and, and then you've got everywhere in between right. and, you know, and for me personally, I fall more on the end of if two weeks of being completely isolated in every way that we possibly can is going to contribute to preventing deaths. I'm all for it. And it, if it costs me nothing, I'm in, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I confess, I've actually been on the side of kind of being like, well, why are you doing that? You know, and, right, right. and I've had to check myself and be like, okay, number one, the one thing to remember is we're, you know, we all, uh, judgment is not, we shouldn't be judging people, you know, either way, whatever side of the spectrum you're on. Cause I know there are people that are like, why are you so concerned about this. Right. And kind of pointing fingers on that. And, and I wouldn't say that I'm particularly concerned as in fear because I'm really not. Mm -hmm. um, but I am thinking mathematically. Yeah. And so, and, and I know that I have a couple, the, I think the reason this for me is kind of been easy for me to make that transition of, okay, sure. I'm fine with, with inconveniencing my family a little bit and, and staying totally quarantined as much as possible is uh, and I shouldn't say quarantined, um, self-isolated, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's because I have people in my life that are, that I interact with, or my husband interacts with regularly that are yeah. very compromised and right. can't afford even a hint of this to, to hit their home. Yes. Uh -huh. So I think for me, that's, that's what I'm seeing. But my question, I guess, is after that long introduction, um, what do you think is the difference and the line that you walk between acting wisely and acting out of fear? Because as Christians, we're not called to be people of fear. You know, we know that God is on the throne, but at the same time, there's a very real mathematical reason to stay home in terms of preventing virus spread. So I I'm just think that's you know, maybe a discussion. I don't want to be divisive because I absolutely don't want there to be, I feel like there's a real ripe uh, field for this, this judging the mm -hmm, way that people mm -hmm. are handling things. And I want to squash that in myself and I want to squash that in all of us and, and help us to look at each other with like, okay, you know what? Everyone is coming at this with a different life experience and worldview, but we can talk about what, what is the importance of, or what does it look like to act in wisdom, but not fear? Well, I think that there's a lot of different ways to define fear. And I don't think that all of them are sinful. No, so I agree. I think that the Bible tells us that we don't need to be anxious. We don't need to be panicky, but it also tells us to be wise. <laughs> you know, I, I remember once, this has nothing to do with the pandemic, but I was newly wed. I don't even think I had kids at the time. And I was talking to a Christian woman who always kept like a six month store of canned goods and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I saw my parents do that, getting ready for Y2K, which didn't become a big deal, but they, they were doing that. They were, you know, getting the pantry ready. And I asked my friend, what's the difference between doing that and like not trusting God. Because in my mind, you know, I, everything was way more black and white, you know, when you're 20 years old or something. Right. And, and I wasn't trying to be like hoity-toity. Like I really wanted to know because it seems like it did make sense, but it also seemed in some ways counterintuitive to like, look at the, the birds of the air. They don't right. store away in barns. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, God never commands you to not store away in a barn. He's just saying the birds of the air don't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she brought up the Proverbs 31 woman who can laugh at days to come because her whole family is clothed. And so basically like this woman who's lauded for how well she takes care of her family and her community is prepared 
four things. Well, and Joseph, you know, he was called to save oh, the people. Oh, for sure. You know, By there was storing a away in barns. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like we can have a, you know, there's, there's one type of fear that's just the human survival instinct, which is a gift and a blessing. You know what I mean? So if all of these kids who are partying on Florida beaches, if every single one of them lived with an 80 year old beloved relative who's already on oxygen because they have um, COPD or something, you know, they're, they're going to be afraid. And I've, so I feel like some, some type of fear is absolutely fine because it will lead you to make those wise choices. You're scared on behalf of the people that you love, right? Do you know what I mean? Like you recognize that this could go really, really bad for them. I don't think that that's the sinful kind of fear the Bible teaches against. I think that what it's teaching against is more of just the, the panic. I think there's an absolute way to be as humanly prepared for things as possible while still trusting God, you know? So I read, a, it was kind of a funny article. It was like um, preppers, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like the prepper yeah. movement, uh-huh. how like they've spent decades being mocked and now they're the ones that everybody's turning to. And like, it, it was serious, but I kind of just took a little humorous spin to it. But I feel like, yeah, there's a way that you could be even like some preppers take it to a, a huge extreme, but I feel like you can still be that prepared and not live in fear. And also, I think a huge difference is whether or not you're trusting in your level of preparedness or you're trusting in God. So if you're saying, Jamie, we are going to keep our entire family in self-isolation, and that is going to guarantee that nothing bad's going to come to us, then you're trusting in the quarantine and you're trusting in the self-isolation. Or, you know, if you've run to the store and stocked up and you've got six months worth of food in your house, in my mind, good. I mean, good for you. That's that in my mind, that's wise. But if you're saying, okay, now I've got my six months worth of food, nothing's going to happen to me. Well, no, actually not. Cause who knows what can happen? Um, that's kind of how I see it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. No, I, I definitely think those are good points. And, you know, when it talks, the Bible says, you know, what is it? Second Timothy one, seven, or I, I might get that wrong, but you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, mm-hmm. but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind or a power mm-hmm. and of love and a self-discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, a spirit of fear is different from God given fear. Like, you know, the right. kind of fear where you're standing at the edge of the grand Canyon and you feel a yeah. flutter in your stomach, like, Oh, I, I need to, I should be here. Yeah. Life is a gift. I don't want to just jump off the edge. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, yeah, because I've lived both ways, you know, I mean, I've, I've had times in my life where I've, I've had just irrational anxiety. I've let chronic worry take over Mm -hmm. and I know what that feels like. And that is not the way God wants us to live. Right. I feel like in this situation, like you said, I don't think it's as much about your actions. I mean, definitely, if you're those guys that bought, what, 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer to Mm -hmm. who knows what what they're going to do with them. But Mm -hmm. uh, that action, I would be so bold as to say, was not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But in terms of some people will store up six months of food. Some people will get a year of food. Some people will have enough for two weeks. Some people. Yeah. And some people already and, have bare cupboards and have no way to get out to get more. <laughs> right. But you know, no, that's that, a real I think thing too. the actions are more of a personal choice, but when it comes, I think the person that stores, if the person that goes out to the store and stores up two weeks of supplies, which is a reasonable thing to do, does that because they're terrified yeah. and have no trust that God is in any of it, even though mm-hmm. they, they are a believer. Um, I think that's sinful because of their heart condition, which is kind of what everything boils down to with Jesus, you know, is what's in so your too. heart. And um, so I think if we come to it and say, you know what, is God bigger than the coronavirus? Well, yeah, of course he is. And, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. And it, but is it a guarantee that he's going to protect me just because I pray for protection? Mm -hmm. It's not, it's just not God. 
it's on God's terms and not ours. And so I really feel like if we can come to the point in our spirit where we say, okay, there is a mathematical truth that if I, you know, if everyone kind of keeps isolated as much as they can to whatever extent they feel is right, um, that this virus is not going to spread as, as rapidly and therefore there will be fewer deaths. I mean, that's a mathematical truth. And so mm -hmm. if we can say, okay, that's why I'm doing this is to reduce this, but a, that's not a guarantee. I'm not going to get it, or my kids right. aren't going to get it, mm -hmm. or my neighbor that I'm concerned about that has health problems mm -hmm. isn't going to get it. You know, but can God be glorified whether we get it or not? Yeah, mm -hmm. He can be glorified if I get the virus. In and, and if I do, He's still at work. He is still good. So I don't know. I think of that as like open-handed prayers, where you're just <laughs> like, God, please protect those that I care for. We have not because we ask not. So let's pray for that protection. Lord, give me wisdom to know how to navigate this the best. And um, yeah, but it, it's a sticky question because I, I just don't know. But I was thinking also kind of in the same line, the last time I was at Costco, I was thinking, what's the difference between just being prepared and hoarding? Because, right. you know, that term gets kind of thrown around mm -hmm. and, and it's yeah. the same kind of thing, I think, maybe. Is... I think it does come down to your attitude. Are you trusting in your stores, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, your surplus or, you know, um, that same friend that I was talking to, yeah. <clears throat> she also mentioned how a big part of her desire to always be stocked up is so that she can be generous to others. Mm -hmm. And that was a neat way to look at it too. You know, I mean, worst case scenario, best case scenario, let's change it to best case scenario. We're all out of isolation in a few weeks and our family's going to have canned food that we can now donate to the local food bank or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Or if things were to get worse and yeah. you had that stuff you would be able to you know because I've already I've already talked mm -hmm. to a couple of people about bartering different things like hey I've got this if you need that personally I don't think it's going to come to that I really believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel I loved the news where you know they said that yesterday China had the first day with no mm. new cases mm -hmm. you know I think there's light at the end of the tunnel I think that we should really if you feel yourself just being terrified about this. I think that's the time to, to check your spirit and really go to mm -hmm. God with those fears and, you know, recite those affirmations, you know, about who God mm -hmm. is. And um, someone quoted, I was listening to something today and they quoted Zig Ziglar of all people. Uh -huh. I, Zig Ziglar said something like, and I'm going to misquote it, but you can Google it for the real one. But he said, I, sp I spend each day reading the Bible and reading the paper because I want to know what's, what each side is doing or something like that. You know, <laughs> like I read the paper, you know, implying that the paper tells us what the enemy is doing, the, the bad headlines. Oh, I see. I thought, I thought you meant like, I want to know what's going on in earth and what's going on in heaven. But oh no, yeah. <laughs> but no, like the, and what, what the enemy is doing, right, the negative right. headlines, what the enemy mm -hmm. is doing, but mm -hmm. the Bible, what God is doing. So um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's for sure. Interesting times. I saw this super cute video where a family's grandma and great grandma was turning 95. And so they had her stand out on her porch and they all were like down the driveway, but Aww. they had big signs for her and they all sang happy birthday. And then they were shouting like, we love you, granny. It was really cute. I would love to see like, if we do end up not having proms, not having graduations, I would just love to see kind of a montage of all the creative ways that people find mm -hmm. to celebrate these moments. Cause I think it's going to be kind of neat to see how the love is shown and in, in, in when you can't have mm -hmm. the typical graduation party when you want to have it. Um, yeah. 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 Just super interesting time. A lot of unknowns. It is so encouraging that things seem to be getting more under control in China yeah. Um, you know, if we follow their exact trajectory, which <laughs> there's no guarantee that we will, it's, it's still going to get worse, but it's also nice to see that on that end, I think that like, if I knew if 
like if God were to just like show up and write in the sky, like the date that all of this would be over, mm-hmm. I feel like that would just change everything because then you know exactly how much to prepare for, exactly right. how long it's going to last. I mean, even if it's going to be a year and a half, I want to know that now, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and hopefully it's just going to be another couple of weeks, but I think for me, that's a little bit of the hardest is, you know, that there are so many unknowns. Should we start rationing food? Oh, this is another funny thing I've been thinking about. So, you know me, like I, I read, I, I didn't put it into these terms until this week, but I'm like, wow, Alana, you read morbid books. Like I think, was it you I was talking about, about reading all these books about the siege of St. Petersburg where like yes. the people starved to death. And it wasn't like one book, like I binged, like that was my genre of choice <laughs> or, um, I was thinking today about a book I read about um, the North Korean famine. It was the book that helps me most prepare to write Flower Swallow, which mm-hmm. is one of my North Korean novels. And it talked a lot about starvation. I mean, it was terrible. It was what it was the hardest book I've ever read. But and you read it I, twice? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned something really interesting that I, I'm choosing to laugh about now. And it's very possible if we're still like isolated in a year, there's no way I'm going to be laughing about it. But I'm laughing about it right now in that um, the people who did not survive, this is, stop me if I'm getting too morbid. I feel really bad about this. <laughs> so We can always edit. Okay. The people who did not survive the North Korean famine were um, the elderly and the children, the very young children, which is what you expect. And then it got so bad that it was like healthy young men who wouldn't survive because they have no fat stores. Mm. And I'm thinking about like my husband and I both signed up for uh, personal training and he is overweight by a lot and I'm overweight by an itty bitty bit. But our um, our body fat percentage isn't too far off, which kind of surprised me at first. But like women, we carry a lot more body weight. Mm-hmm. And the reason God designed it that way is morbid and providential. It's so that we're the ones who can survive like a food shortage. And so I've had the munchies because I'm stressed. And every time <laughs> no. I'm munching, I'm, I'm thinking to myself like, okay, body, do your thing. <laughs> rationalize the the snacking so ladies <laughs> is the time to snack it's our time to shine you stress eaters <laughs> yes oh my gosh that is kind of that i don't think that's too morbid i think we'll leave it in <laughs> okay well you know history has so much to teach us yeah and some of it shows us that people survive really 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 hard things yeah. i was in a book club where um, we used to live out when we were super, super, super rural. And the book club's meeting this month on a Zoom chat, so I'm going to join in. And the book they selected, which ironically I think was chosen even before the isolation started, but called Deep Survival. I've only listened to the first chapter, but the idea is kind of like um, scientifically what sets people apart like if five people get lost in the woods and two of them make it out and three of them don't like what what kind of makes that difference oh wow it kind of looks at it you know just from the um physiology the psychology that sort of thing but um i feel like the human race is so resilient and sometimes just being reminded of history can be an encouragement. We're not the first generation to go through something like this, <laughs> you know, and kind of like what you were saying, if you're going to be like totally isolated, let's do it in a world where you've got the internet and you've got, I saw a headline like they're, um, I don't know who they is, but somebody in authority has asked Netflix to slow down their streaming <laughs> because <laughs> it's taking up so much like internet space. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, my, my husband was just asking, he was like, yeah. you know, how long is the internet going to sustain all of this? All of this extra streaming. <laughs> kids doing online school. I know. I know. People, you know, I mean, it, it but is right now it works and thank God it works because it, it absolutely does make a difference in, you know, just in mental health, having, having things, you know, what I realized is if things do get really, really bad and like, let's say we, let's say the internet somehow gets shut down, you know, in all of this mess, I actually don't have physical copies of most of my books. 
um, they're all just like backed up on the cloud and things like that. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's kind of, I mean, yeah. And I don't even know how that works because they're somewhere, right? I mean, even if they're on the cloud. I have no it? idea. I, I don't I, know how the, the cloud makes no sense to me. I know, right? Uh, but, but we've yeah. gotten so dependent, you know, on that. Um, we have. We have. This is actually a good reminder for myself. I was thinking that I should, because we've got Amazon Prime movies, and some of them you can actually download onto your devices. And I was thinking, like, we should probably just download some of these. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even if you know we get a snowstorm and the power's out for a day, we're going to want something to do to, you know, keep entertained. Yeah, definitely. Is your family like? Are your kids getting a little stir crazy? You know, I have to be completely honest. I, so having the work in our house done and needing them to be kind of holed up and away from the construction, um, because I think I said before, we have one guy that's been doing our work and he has continued to come. We've social distanced and we're, you know, kind of, but Mm -hmm. he is continuing to work, getting our floors and all of that stuff done. And there's been a lot of construction. So I have them kind of hold up in their room a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Last week, I was like, electronics, whatever you want to do, play Minecraft all day. So they were just kind of happy to do that. We did go outside a little. This week, I'm trying to incorporate more, okay, practice your instruments. And, you Mm -hmm. know, they've had some lessons online and stuff like that and school stuff and reading and things like that. But so far, they've been okay. Like, we've we've gone outside enough, I think. They were so, our, our lives before this were like, I think unhealthily overscheduled anyway. Right. And I think right. this has been like a they overscheduling detox. Detox. That, that they're <laughs> yeah. happy, happy yeah, for. Good. But I think I can sense that this week we're gradually getting back into like, okay, this is real life. Let's incorporate mm-hmm. some, you know, I've been doing lots of chores I'm going to incorporate them more into getting some chores done yeah. and doing things other than just hanging a little out bit, and being entertained. Yeah, a little bit of structure is good and also a little bit of grace. You know, our kids are doing more electronics. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we still have one who doesn't have, you know, energy to do anything but watch yeah. TV, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which like, is fine. You know, I mean, a week post-surgery, yeah, watch all the TV you want. You know, so I feel like... I feel like there's a balance, you know, um, structure's going to be good. And also a lot of grace is going to be good. I did a chair aerobics routine yesterday on YouTube. Oh, you did. Cool. Yeah. It was actually harder than I thought it would be. And it felt really good. So I'm, I know like my absolutes probably like by after this weekend or at the very least, um, once our youngest is totally healed up. We might not go back to like the full, full homeschool schedule, like immediately, but for me, the absolutes are going to be some outside time Mm -hmm. and some exercise and some family time. You know, um, I think those are going to be my three, this absolutely is going to happen. And then, you know, we'll, we'll keep up with the academics, but even if that slows down a little for right now, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I think for the parents out there that are finding their kids at home, I have a friend who posted some really good advice on YouTube, on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, just Mm -hmm. who is a homeschooler. And she was getting, I might be redundant if I've said this before, stop. No, I don't think so. Okay. So she just said, a lot of people have been asking me about homeschooling since, you know, this whole thing happened. A lot of kids are home from school. And she said, you know, don't feel this immense pressure to recreate the classroom in your house. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) like no, that is the best advice. Yeah, she (laughs) said what a day looks like. I think she said her, you know, her third grader spends like one hour doing sit down writing work, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and then Mm -hmm. there are educational computer games. There's baking cookies and letting them figure out the measurements themselves. There's Mm -hmm. board games, card games, you name it, like a lot of different, you know, go on nature walks. Like Mm there, this is the greatest Mm -hmm. time of year for this to happen because we're able to get outside more. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she just, you know, had that advice of, you know, take advantage of this time. Yeah. have, Have family time. If you're home with your kids, don't feel this immense pressure to recreate the classroom in your house because it's going to be too stressful and it's 
counterproductive probably. I heard a really sweet story that I've been thinking about lately. So there was this motivational speaker who, when he was growing up, his family was really, really poor and they lived in an area with really harsh winters and their furnace went out and the kids were still, I think they were like elementary age and it was going to be a couple weeks before they could afford to have it replaced. And so the parents set up a tent in the living room and they all slept together in a tent basically to just conserve heat. But this guy was talking about how, you know, he spent years thinking that that was the coolest, funnest thing their family had done. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until he was, you know, a lot older that he realized could have been maybe even a life or death situation, you know, if the temperatures dropped too much, but his Mm -hmm. parents turned it into a fun memory. And I think best case scenario is that we're all stuck at home for a little while and then life goes back to whatever its new normal is going to be, which isn't going to be worse than where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And then we get to look back and be like, wow, that was, you know, like we survived this. And so the the thing I've been asking myself, and I'm probably repeating myself too. That's the problem with doing this every day. We're (laughs) we're just repeating the same thing. We're not used to this. Yeah. This is (laughs) uncharted territory. (laughs) But, you know, I've been asking myself, okay, so let's say that the best case scenario is what I just said. You know, nobody um, gets any sicker than they are. Nothing spreads. Like we don't get, everything turns out fine is basically what I want to say. Even if it means we're holed up for a couple of months. How do I want to look back on my time right now? I don't want to have wasted it all Mm -hmm. in worry and fear. I don't want to have freaked my kids out. Now, I also, I'm not in the camp of sheltering kids from the truth. Mm -mm. So our kids know exactly why we're home. They know exactly um, what's at stake. Well, I don't want to say exactly what's at stake, but they know it's a serious thing going on, Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I don't believe in lying to your kids. Um, Have you ever seen Life is Beautiful? I was just about to say something about that because this, what you're saying reminds me of that, how they turned a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. The father and his son are in this concentration camp and basically the father turns it into like a game. Yeah. To help his son survive. It's one of my favorite movies. My husband can't watch it anymore um, just because it is so hard to watch. But so basically once our kids turn 12, they watch, um, we watch, you know, my two sons and I have watched it, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, okay, you're 12. You're going to watch life. It's beautiful now. And um, so my middle son and I just watched it a few weeks ago and he had such an interesting take he actually was very mad Mm -hmm. that the dad lied at his little boy. Yeah. And I had never even thought about that before. Like I've seen it, I'm sure over a dozen times. Mm -hmm. Um, It was just a very interesting way to look at it. Yeah. No. And as soon as you said that, I thought, wow, I could totally see that. And our, Mm -hmm. our oldest hasn't seen it yet. And that's one that we should watch with him. I could maybe not this week, (laughs) maybe not this week, but I could see him having that same response. He has Mm -hmm. a very strong sense of truth and justice and, and I could see him having that. It was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, again, I had never looked at it that way, you know, but we're, we're kind of of the camp that we want our kids to know the hard parts about history Mm -hmm. because one day they're going to have to live through things like it, kind of like what we're doing now. Yeah. So Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Well, I think it's a really great opportunity to teach our kids that when hard things come that are scary, that we turn to God and we turn them into prayers, you know, that we can take those anxieties and we can lay them at God's feet. We can, you know, pray for that peace, pray Mm -hmm. instead of feeling helpless. There are things that we can pray for that are, that are going to change things yeah. and that are going to make a difference. Even when you're totally cooped up in your house, you can make mm-hmm. a difference in the world by prayer. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, one more thing kind of to talk about parents at home with kids. I saw a Facebook update from my cousin, who's a doctor in the Bay area where things are really, really bad. Mm. And she's got two preschool aged kids and she's still working and it's a it's a huge dilemma because she <clears throat> normally it's her mother-in-law who watches the kids while she works 
but her mother-in-law is in, you know, that elderly, Mm -hmm. let's be really careful category. And my cousin's getting potentially exposed. So she was talking about like every day when I come home, I know that I might be bringing this virus home to my kids Mm -hmm. and they might, and it was very, very um, sobering. And she was talking to like the moms who are complaining, like my kids are at home. I don't know, like I'm going to pull out my hair. Mm -hmm. And basically her attitude was, I would trade places with you in a heartbeat. And it was just, it was such a sobering, really, really sobering reminder that what a blessing if you are home with your kids right now. And also a reminder, like let's absolutely be praying for these healthcare workers who are in those kinds of situations. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. We could do that now. That could be kind of our focus today. If yeah. We want to. Absolutely. One, one thing before we do that, unless you have other stuff, is um, as we were talking about, I kind of shared that I've I've had times where I've let fear get the best of me and chronic worry. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we actually have a webinar. It's a free webinar that you can oh, sign yeah. up for. Mm-hmm. It's called um, From Worrier to Warrior. And you can find it at prayingchristianwomen.com slash warrior, not worrier, <laughs> W-A-R-R-I-O-R. <laughs> and, Could you and, use that in a sentence, please? <laughs> yes. I am a warrior. Wa- I'm a prayer warrior. <laughs> warrior. Does it work? That was a poor choice of name. It makes absolute sense when you see it written out. It does. But <laughs> that, it, it basically... It's kind of an hour long thing and it just kind of um, presents this method of of assessing our fears, assessing the things that bring us chronic worry and transforming those into prayers and affirmations and even action steps to just help you feel like you're on top of things and refocus yourself on who God is in yeah. light of any problems that you might have. So mm-hmm. that's prayingchristianwomen.com slash W-A-R-R-I-O-R. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think I prayed first yesterday. So you want to start us off today? All righty. I'll do it. Let's do it. God, we just thank you for another day to just come together and have fellowship and kind of a lighthearted talk about a not lighthearted subject. And I just pray, Father, that you would just be among us now, that your spirit would be here, that you would hear our prayers, and that you would just give us that confidence that prayer changes the world, that our prayers matter, and that coming together like this is so powerful. God, we just lift up those medical workers. I specifically lift up Alana's cousin. God, I just pray that you would protect her that you would just shield her from getting sick, that you would shield her children and her mother-in-law that was helping with childcare. Um, God, we lift up all of our healthcare workers that are just totally on the front lines of this battle. We ask that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them protection. We pray for um, the availability of tests to be able to test people so that they're aware of, of people that are carrying this virus so that they can be more prepared and warn more people and stop the virus. Um, God, we just pray that you would provide them with protective clothing and gear that they need. Um, I don't know the situation um, that the doctors and nurses are facing right now, but um, but I it sounds like there might be a shortage of those things. God, we pray that you would provide an abundance for them, that you would um, bring bring their needs to the right people, that any red tape would be cut, that they would be able to get everything that they need in abundance. And we do pray for um, just the families of these workers, God, that you would be protecting them, that you would be sheltering and shielding them from this disease. And God, we just, we pray that all of this, everything that is going on now, that you would just be glorified in it, that your light would be shining, that, that we would get glimpses of how you're at work and that, that we would not lose hope, that people would not be um, doubtful of your love, that, that your love would shine through, that your power would shine through and that people would see you and just be pointed towards you during this time.
thank you, God, for all the ways that your hand has been over this whole globe during this pandemic, God. Thank you for the good news about the spread of this virus slowing down in China. Thank you, God, for all of the doctors and nurses and researchers and lab techs and hospital administrators and all these people who are putting themselves at serious risk by treating the people who need it. I just pray for those doctors who have children or who live with people with um, suppressed immune systems or in high risk mm-hmm. groups, God, we just recognize that this is such a, a hard spot for them to be in. And they're probably not happy to be in that situation. And like my cousin said, would love more than anything else to be stuck at home safe with their families, God. So please give them so much strength, give them so much endurance, give them joy and laughter, give them good camaraderie with their peers and just keep their spirits lifted, God. And we do pray that you would be the one to bring a swift and powerful end to this pandemic. We pray that you would be the one to sustain the economy and world governments and life as we know it, God, you are strong enough to have your sustaining hand over our society. And we pray and look forward, hopefully, to the day when life does return to a, a steady and stable normal, God. And just pray for your um, hand of protection over our listeners and their loved ones, over Jamie's family and my family. I praise you so much that my son's doing so much better today with his pain levels and thank you that he was able to get his tonsils out, even though this was just such a crazy time in history for it to have happened. God, you are so amazing. We just thank you for all the ways that you have provided for us so well. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, thank you, Jamie. I really enjoy getting together with you. Thank you for those of us who, or for those of you who listen, so it doesn't feel like we're just talking to the air. (laughs) Although like truth be told, I would totally do this with you, even if we didn't have an audience. (laughs) Even if it was just for fun. It is just for fun. This is fun, Jamie. It is. Cool. Well, we will talk soon.